Hello Cinematech Geeks, James Garden here with a new episode. Today we are going to do what can you plug into a DCI projector. This has become an important issue as those who have you know, DCI projectors are starting to become quite common and alternative content satellite, DVD, Blu-ray, eCinema, um, people are struggling, struggling a little bit of how and what they can plug into the projector. So let's go have a look um, at uh, a projector, the sort of, and then I'll talk about the type of frequencies and how you plug it in, and a bit of about channels, etc., in a projector. And finally, we'll, we'll go over some technology that I've been working on. Uh, one of the reasons I've been a little bit uh, off the air lately because I've been working hard on a new product which has got to do with this area, and I'd like to show you uh, how that sort of works and how it's shaping the industry in this area. Uh, anyway. Let's go have a look at a projector. Uh, upstairs I've got a Christie, which is easy to get to the side panel. So we'll do that now. Here we go. This is the input of a Christie ZX projector. Uh, all projectors, no matter what brand it is, Christie, NEC or Barco, have the same TI engine in there. So they all have exactly the same inputs and all the same um, TI bugs. But let's have a quick look at uh, what they have in. And up the top you see the main ones, these two VNC cables. And that's from your SMS or DCI player. Generally, uh, in most installs, we uh, suggest that these connectors uh, aren't changed or touched and left working as is because we've found that they can be quite touchy and those who play with them have commonly run into a show which drops picture halfway through. Well, it has happened a few times, so generally we, we, we say, you know, suggest that if they're working, leave them alone, because that's the main source that the projector will be project, projecting. Then we have the two DVI connectors, um, which of course here we've got one going to an eCinema player, and occasionally we use a B for a, a Blu-ray player that we may plug in. So let's just talk about how we can plug those in. But first of all, um, the, top, the top connectors. These connectors are basically um, typical dual stream SDI, single stream or dual stream SDI inputs. And that can take inputs from you know, HD cams, digital beta cams, anything that does SDI, as well as an SMS. Um, the actual SMS signal is based on that type of signal. It's based on a 2K dual stream signal. Uh, it's just encrypted using the Cinelink 2 uh, algorithm. Now the DVIs are, are quite special. Now depending on the version of the projector you got, uh, for example, I've contacted Christy and you see and Christy, for example, told me that the, all Christy M and all ZXs came with HDCP. Now this is an important issue if you're plugging in a Blu-ray player or, or similar that if you don't support HDCP uh, it probably won't work. You only really be able to get computer generated non-HDCP or protected content onto the projector. With the DVI you can actually do dual stream DVI etc and do um, lots of different types of inputs to it but generally People are plugging it in to, to put um, uh, satellite content uh, through a scan converter or eCinema direct, direct, directly in or potentially plugging in a computer for presentations. Um, but we'll, we'll go over those um, uh, frequencies that it can, it can t do uh, in, after this. Uh, I've got a, a document to show us all those numbers. So that's the side of a DCI projector, and basically they're all the same. They, they all have the same inputs, they just may be sl slightly differently set out, but inside they all, all go to the same card from TI. On the screen you can see now uh, a technical diagram from NEC that lists all the support source sources supported sources for an NC series projector, basically a DCI projector from NEC. So this is the same for all projectors from all brands because they're all the same TI engine inside. This is uh, a list of uh, the, cinema input, the cinema input or the dual SDI or dual HD SDI inputs. As you can see here, you've got all the common uh, TV format supported, all of the different frame rates, 
interlaced and progressive. You can see here interlaced and progressive over here. And you go down through it and you'll see, you know, even 720p supported uh, and, the, and the 2k supported here at all the different frame rates. Um, now, if we go further down the document, which I, I will make available on the uh, on the D D Cine Tech Geek website uh, under this uh, the placement of this video, now a list of supported through the DVID input. As you can see here, um, first of all, all progressive down the whole set. So no interlaced input is capable. So for example, a uh, common problem is a lot of people who are doing satellite distribution or streaming or real time uh, like operas, etc. All those boxes output interlaced. So you can't really do it directly into the projector without using some sort of scan converter, which is problematic because uh, they're expensive uh, and uh, people would like to think they can get away without using a scan converter. But there are a few things. I know that uh, Christie are bringing out something with Jeffen. Uh, they've got a product that's suitable for this scan converter, which has all the audio, cinema type audio connectors on it as well. And if you have a look uh, more to the side here, this is an important uh, area here. This is where how you have to set up with the channel. Uh, on the projector using the DCP cinema or the standard DCP uh, processing path on the projector. And this confuses a lot of people when setting up the channels for alternative content. But you'll notice up here that there's only a very limited uh, set of resolutions supported. Uh, 640, 800, you know, 1080, 1280 by uh, 1024 is pretty much all the standard uh, resolutions that a normal computer can output. Then you've got the two um, high resolutions, 1920 by 1080, etc. Notice that you know uh, 1280 by 720 and all those other uh, type of outputs aren't supported. And you'll also notice on the end here that uh, all these lower resolutions use the DCP cinema processing path while the higher resolutions use the standard DLP, so I go straight through. And you'll go down here as well, um, and you'll see uh, other, other like this is 10-bit using both ports, and this is 8-bit up the top using just a single port of the, H, uh, of the DVI input. Now, on this topic, uh, as you can see, uh, if you want to plug in something to, like for example, uh, a, a corporate presentation, really uh, it's, it's unlikely that the corporate computer can do this resolution so you're, you're really only going to be stuck with these resolutions and sitting in the middle of the screen. If you do try and push those resolutions while in this different type of path here over, um, using when the projector is in this mode, the picture will show up but actually will be sitting small and in the centre of the screen. This has commonly confused a lot of uh, our, the users I've talked to about this. So those are sort of the issues you have when setting these up. Also, you've got to remember that a DCI projector has to be set up specifically and exactly for the type of input you're going to send it. You can't just plug something in and expect it to go onto the screen the way you think it will, or if at all. You actually have to program the projector to uh, accept that signal. And this has become a very big issue, especially those who are doing corporate events. And all that is just plug it in and get it on screen. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. You have to actually program a channel to specifically talk to the type of device you want to talk to. And usually you should be able to program a channel for it. corporate inputs up here. That should take all of those inputs. And then uh, once, if you're going to plug in specifically uh, an eCinema or a progressive 1080 uh, Blu-ray player with a, you know, a progressive scale on it, which is commonly what a lot of people are doing uh, so they can put a Blu-ray on screen. You don't need a scale or anything. It just needs to be a, uh, a 1080p um, uh, up, upscaling DVD player, which are common with the Blu-rays uh, players, and you'll get the picture on screen as soon as you get the channel programmed correctly in the DVD player into the right mode, which is the hardest part. So those are the sort of things you can do. Now, uh, in the future, uh, the Series 2 are going to expand on this, and also the Series 2 will do interlace, so if you're plugging into uh, 1080i, so if you're plugging in into these satellite boxes with the i, they should 
now work on the Series 2 when they come out uh, sometime next year.